Good afternoon. Welcome to Art for the Ageless, and this is class 18, and will be our last class of the six sessions for the next seven weeks. I would like to uh, address the online audience first, because today we are doing uh, geometric shapes and still life. So let us first look at our shapes. I would like the people online to get two papers, okay? A, either a five by seven or a five by nine. If you take your nine by 12 paper and simply divide it in half, that will be fine. Uh, but if you want to get a little more specific, chop off an inch or two and get the five by nine, which I have given to my students. The next part, since you have a, uh, a six, uh, a nine by 12, is to cut off enough so you have a nine by nine square. I'm going to show you how to do this. Taking, get a ruler, get a pencil, and get a little pair of scissors. We're going to give you time to do this. First off, I want you to take the ruler and your nine by 12. Okay, I don't have the extra blue one. I'm going to use this. And I want you to measure across three inches. And where are you? There you are. Okay, measure across three inches. Take a little nick. Six inches, take a little nick. And of course, nine, take a little nick. And you are cutting off the rest. Okay, so this is gone. Then you're going to turn your paper the other way. And again, nick at three, nick at six, and the rest is nine. All right, so we have, we're going to have a square that looks like this. Then I went very simply, I want you to fold it in, so it is this way. And people at the tables, you can now take your square and fold it in, give it a nice crease, open it up, turn it the other way, fold it in again, give it a good crease, and you're ready. Opening it up, notice where the cuts are. Be careful. I need you to take your scissors and cut it in to the fold, into the fold, and into the fold. So people at your seats have already done that for you. People at home, please proceed to cut in. Okay. All right. That done, if you fold it, you will see that you have a little box, a square, a three-dimensional square. The next piece of paper, the one that we, that we cut up to about a five by seven, this is very simple. We're just going to be folding it in and gluing it. So that's all. That's all we need to do. Okay. People at your seat right now, proceed. Open your glue stick. Turn it to the left. And simply, things are not that simple, are they? Simply strike it on the end a few times. And if you don't have a glue stick at home, you can just as well use a paper clip uh, staple, stapler. That's it. All right, so we're preparing some visual 
uh, objects to help us learn this lesson. And simply fold it in, make sure the ends pretty well match, and press it with your thumbs inside. Pressing, pressing, pressing. You need to press it because you don't want it to just split open later on. Over here, I went a little bit crazy last night. I said, oh, I want to do lots of these, making lots of cylinders. People don't realize how often these shapes appear in the environment. Cylinders especially. Cans, barrels, just about anything you might look at every single day you are going to see some kind of a cylinder from your large oil tanks right straight down. Okay, so here we have just loads and loads of cylinders. Now let's take and finish our square. I hope you people out there are ready. Now, when you close this up, you might want to decide to put this one on the end. If that's true, the glue goes here. Or you might want to put this one on the end and fold these two in and put the glue here. It doesn't really make any difference just so long as you don't put the glue on the wrong side. So I'm going to glue this one oh, well, over the place. The pain. All right, I decided I'm going to glue this one, this flap. Now, I know you weren't ready with me doing this, so you can always do it later. And over here also. If your glue stick doesn't work, just simply borrow from somebody else. This means I'm going to fold it in this way. And this way and press it down give it a good press how are we doing good everyone has made a cylinder We're now working on our square uh, cube now it's become a cube and the other side there we go Boop. slippery little things I think I need to put this down. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, something got stucky boot. There we go. Okay, this one got up. Oh, looks like there's a loose end, so I'm going to have to glue this one now. Okay, now that we have our objects ready, we're going today to talk about shading. Shading is very basic, and we're just going to do it in a very simple form. There are many ways of shading. Uh, some are by blending, such as here, where we put down a great deal of product, and we just get very, very light. Uh, and here where we do what we call a cross hatch. And a cross hatch can be done with either a straight line or a curved line or both. So we're going to experiment a lot with those today. All right, let's put down our, our cubes and our cylinders for a moment. Uh, every one of you has a, uh, a little box of oil pastels. So please open your box now. And on your board, put your sheet of vanilla paper. And we're going to practice just a few strokes to create shade. Let's put these away. And off you go. Let us take our purple and try this one first. OK. We're going to do a lot of pressure and then diminish it very slightly. So let's start in the center, hold this thing tight, and very, very 
tightly. And now I'm going to release that pressure and do a middle shade and I'm going to release it again. Okay, it's almost like a tornado. I'm going to do it in reverse over here. Very hard, middle tone, and very light. We're going to do about three shades, the dark, the medium, and the light. Uh, usually when you're studying shade, you'd be asked to do up to 10 shades, but we can start with three because uh, it's a little simpler and less frustrating. Over here, dark again, middle shade, release, and release. Let's do the shading technique of straight line. One, two, three, four. Just strike it. Now, another thing that is good is to use a different color. Why? No reason. It just kind of feels good. So I'm gonna take out the blue. Please take your blue. And I'm going to cross hatch it which means it's just like a wire, just like chicken wire. I can do that as many times as I want. It's almost like creating a woven piece of cloth. All right, let's go back to our purple. And let's try the circular motion. So you're making a curve. Let's try it again over here. And this time, let's take the blue and kind of make our circular motion going in a little bit of a different direction. Very softly now, very softly. Now to create shade, there is always one side is light and the other side is a little darker. Sean, can I have a, a deep close up on this one? Yes. Okay. So here is our purple and our blue, but I am going to strike it even deeper. because I want a shade. Strike it this way, and I'm gonna strike it this way. I'm gonna go back to my purple again. If you would please hold up your work so I can discern whether or not we are ready to go on. Okay, getting there, getting there. Good. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go on to the next step. So far in the process, uh, we've created our cylinder and we have created our cube. And we have covered straight line shading and curved line shading. All right, let's get into it a little bit. Here we go. One of my most favorite shapes, of course, is the cylinder. So we're going to learn a very simple way of creating our cylinder. The shape is sort of like an oval. And again, I'm going to start with the blue, which is the most pleasing color. And as you can see in the diagram, 
I'm going to start with just doing the arch, the top. And then I'm going to go around. So let's just start slowly and practice. Like the top of a circle, top of a moon. I'm going to do that again. And this time I'm going to finish it. I just did the top and I did the bottom. Let's do that again. Top, bottom. Now I'm going to bring it down, straight down, as straight as I can. If you need to tilt the board to get it straight, that's fine. And then I'm going to do it again, top, bottom, down. Each time you do it, you will improve. Again, top, bottom, almost there. Oh, that's so crooked. Sometimes I have to turn my board. I just can't see crooked. Doesn't make any difference. We're just practicing anyway. Down, down, top, bottom. Again, down, top, Bottom. I've given you plenty of paper. Use it. If you're not happy, just grab another piece of paper. There's a pencil on your table also. You want to write your name so you don't get it mixed up with everybody else's. All right, let's go down to the next one. Top. Oh, I see I've started in brown. Okay, find your brown. And we're going to do top, bottom, straight down, straight down. I need to turn my board because I can't get the uh, perspective. Top, bottom. Now I'm going to take my blue and emphasize some of my lines. I want to emphasize this one, and I want to emphasize this one. And I want to just do the bottom over here. I'm going to do it in brown again. Top, bottom, straight down. bottom. Now I'm going to play on this one for a while by taking my blue and doing straight line shading. In other words, I'm going to go, just do this. And I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to go down until I reach a very light, light touch. It's very light touch. If you notice, the light over here must have some dark here. So I'm just going to put a little dark here. And I can do it either on a straight down shading, or I can start to curve it. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to start to curve this. I like the cylinder because you can combine the movements of the circular Cross hatching and just the straight cross hatching. Notice I am striking it with little tiny strikes. I'm not bearing down, I'm just simply hitting it very softly. Over here, too, I can just hit it very softly. You may start to get 
your three-dimensional effects that you like now. Because the way a cylinder works, let's see, this is a good one. I don't know if you can see this too well. You'll notice the darkness. Let's see if I can do it against here. Okay. Okay, there you go, there you go. You can see the darkness in the center of the cylinder, the darkness in the shade, and just where you see the darkness the most, see the light. And this creates the three-dimensional effect. Sending you home today with these three-dimensional objects and a couple of pieces of paper, I want you to practice just looking at it and trying to recreate the shade. All right, I'm going to get a little bit darker over here now. And a little darker over here. I have my brown and my blue in here, and I'm going to start one more time down here because I really want to get a background. We did not go into color mixing or complementary colors. Though this time, do not put the top, just do the bottom. When you start to do your backgrounds, you need to think about complementary colors. When you start to mix your colors, you need to think about those which are pleasing and those which are not. So again, I am striking. I'm working with a medium called oil pastel. The oil pastel is different from the dry pastel in that it contains some sort of an oil. Uh, it can be worked one over the other or not. This is purple. Okay, I'm going to put in the purple now. A purp doing all the cool colors works nicely. The blues, purples where you can get this pleasing effect. Also, when you're home, uh, try to draw fruit with your oil pastels. You might find that you're having a really good time doing that. Okay. When your oil pastel gets down to a nib, you need, of course, to just take your thumb and peel it off. Oil pastels are not that expensive. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit darker here. And I'm going to start to put in my crosshatch. It's going to be a straight crosshatch. I'm going to bring it to the edge. And I'm going to take my yellow, and I'm going to put it into the light part. Again, just striking lightly. Now, because I'm using yellow, I know very well that the complementary color of yellow is purple. So, I can either use the yellow or blue or anything else. And if you were doing a piece, you would want that to stand out. So, you would naturally do a background of its complementary color. So, if you're at that stage of the game, simply put in And that way, you can also straighten out your can if it's too crooked. I like to use black as a shadow on the other side. Nobody's going to say anything. So there we go. A little bit of a black. Basic? Yeah, it's very basic. It's very non-threatening. I think I'd like to do it a little bit darker, so I'm going to put some brown in there. The colors, the more colors you put in, the nicer it is. Really, I like a lot of colors. 
And again, you can go down this way. Get a little here. Okay. Would you like to show me your work? Okay, nobody's going to say anything. Just good, good, good. Very good. Very nice. Okay, okay very good. I wanted to make it a policy where, you know, if you don't, if you don't want us to see your work, just give us a na 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 sound, so uh, we obey your signal. All right, let's take a look. Uh, let's go a little further. We showed it to yourself. I, I like that. Yes. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Let's go on. See what we have next. Oh. Sphere. All right, you have a sphere at your table. So hold it up, take a look at it, observe it, see where uh, the light is coming from. Could um, uh, Sarah, could you get me a, or maybe a Denise, you're close. Could you bring me uh, this a sphere from the uh, that table, just so that uh, yeah, I just want to show. It's a foam, it's a styrofoam sphere. Thank you very much. Be careful of the wires, thank you. It's a styrofoam sphere. And even though it is subtle, you can still see where the light is coming from. So, now we can't cre recreate a sphere. But I see one of our students has immediately found a place for it. Okay, I can do that too. If you want to have a little fun, yes, you can go and place your... Oh, I like that now. It looks like a night light in the front lawn. And so, yes, a sphere, of course, we see everywhere. We can't avoid it. Absolutely not. Let's take a fresh piece of paper and try to recreate our sphere. First, we need to practice. Let's take our brown and just without touching down, first in the air, of course, and then hovering, hovering, like a drone, hovering and then touch down. Hover, hover, touch down. Hover, hover, touch down. Eh. Hover, keep hovering. Okay, hovering. When you feel you want to touch down, you touch down. Getting better. Hover, touch down. Let's do six. We're just practicing. If the paper moves, you're just messing it up. But it doesn't make any difference because we're just practicing. Okay, so we've done a practice sh uh, sheet of circles. Put that to one side, get another piece of paper. Now let's practice the straight shading technique. Okay. Hovering and touch down. Okay. So we're going to go straight up like this. I decided my shadow is going to be on the right hand side and it might be because I'm left handed. I don't know. If you want your shading on the other side, please do so. I'm going to take my black just to show you what I have done. This way. Up, 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 up. It almost looks like a crescent moon. So think crescent moon when you think of the shape of your shader, your shadow. Let's do that again. And if you're getting bored with the brown, just get another color. Okay. Time. I'm going to try to cross hatch more. 
I'm taking a purple this time. And I'm cross hatching it this way. So, this is one way of doing it. You can do it straight. I will do it in black just to show you a little bit better that it went this way crescent moon, and cross hatch the other way. I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to go into it a little bit more. Little strokes, short strokes, so that it goes off naturally. Crescent moon, crescent moon. This time I'd like to do a little bit of blue. Straight cross hatch. Maybe start to get a little bit darker on that side. And a little bit more. So the darker you get, the rounder your ball will get. Get my brown again. And I'm going to just very lightly get a little closer. I think that's about as far as I want to get. I'd like to try to again do a blue background here just to bring out the shape of the sphere on, this, on the left side. And to define it a little bit better. And black to define the shadow on the table. Would you like to show me your work? She's like, no, I won't. It doesn't look like yours. Okay, well, okay. You need to think crescent moon, crescent moon. Okay, if I, okay, see, look at this. All right, this is the moon. When the moon is diminished, it becomes only the crescent. So if you're going to go like this, that is not a crescent moon. Okay, so just think, how do you make a crescent? Crescent cookie, crescent moon. Let the shadow follow the crescent moon. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, now we did straight line, but now we're going to start to do a curved line for the sphere. Why am I so in love with the sphere and the cylinder? It just flows. One flows to the other. All right, let's grab a new piece of paper. And okay, I usually start with my brown. I think I'm going to start with my purple. I don't like that one at all. Nobody cares. I care. All right, let me get my brown and see if I can define this a little bit better. If I just totally hate it, I'm going to start again. Just totally hate it. Sometimes you're, uh, you can go to the right, and then sometimes you turn the wheel of the car to the left. So to the right and to the left. Between the both of them, you will get a circle. Now for this one, I'm going to just show you blatantly with the black. It's going to be a curve, 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 small curve, larger curve. I'm striking it again, and I'm doing the crescent moon. And then it's going to be struck this way. 
It's not going to be straight. It's going to be struck at a curve. So it's going to be a total curve. All right, I'm going to do it very softly over here. I'm going to start in brown. This way. And I am just going to start smacking it down like my crescent moon. Just hitting it. And I'm going to strike it circular this way. What else am I going to put into it? I'm probably going to put some more purple in it. I'm going to make it as multicolor as possible. So let's have some real multicolor fun and just put everything you want into it. Except the red. I don't want you to put any, any reds in it just about now. I think you might put some yellow in it, like, but let it go this way. A little bit darker, blue, blue will do it. So when you start defining, use one of the cool colors, blue or purple or green. And don't be afraid to just go one layer on top of the other because that is the fun of your oil pastel. Oil pastel is similar to crayon. And you can get as dark as you want because you're just striking it. And when you go home and you do your oranges and your apples and your bananas, think of your cylinders, and think of your of your shapes think of where your light is coming from okay so i'm just about finished with this one do i want some background well i did this before i'll just have to do it again i'm only doing it to define the light part that's all just to define it Well, the sphere has been an adventure. A little bit more of our artistic adventures together. Again, I'm using the black as a shadow. Maybe a longer shadow. So, how are we doing this time? <laughs> I see this. Okay. Do you have to be perfect the first time? No, no, no one was pushing you. All right. Okay, let's go on to something else. And I don't want to hear any groans. Uh, no groans. It's a square. It's only a square. It's just a square. Very harmless little square. All right, and we're just going to touch it, okay? We're just going to touch on that, the cube. Okay, easy cube, blue, clean paper. Ready? Okay. Two lines. They're parallel, and one is staggered just a little bit over here. Okay, so let's start with that. If you feel that your hand is trembling or you can't make it steady, use another sheet of paper as a, a ruler, as a sharp edge. That's all. Okay, the next one, let's do that again. Stagger it. Now I'm going to go down at an angle. And I don't care if you do this. Do that, I don't care. It's almost like a diamond. All right, let's do it again. 
stagger it down. This time, let's drop like the leg of a table. Let's just drop it down. I have to turn it sideways because I, I need to hold on to it better. Okay, just drop it down. Drop this one down also, but don't drop it down as far as this one. These two are sort of the same. If you don't like it, just move on to a clean space or a clean piece of paper. You don't have to fuss. Okay, let's try it again. Stagger it. Slanting, slanting. Down. Down. All right, now I'm going to complete it. I'm going to complete the bottom so that it is parallel with the top line. And this line here should be parallel like a railroad track with this one. If it isn't, fix it. There. No problem. Let's try it one more time. A little larger. Stagger. Angle, angle, down, bottom, fill in the bottom, angle. Okay. On the bottom one, once you reach the bottom, I'm going to drop down to the shading. The top usually does not have any kind of uh, a, sh a shadow. It's usually kind of light. Whereas, you'll see a lot of light on one. Well, that didn't glue too well, did it? On one, I think we can see it pretty well. Yeah, OK. So you see uh, one side is very light. One side is dark. Okay, so I'm going to make this the very dark side. And I'm going to do, I can't do circular, so I have to do straight cross hatching across and down. Middle is going to go this way. And of course, in the top, I might just very lightly touch it over here, and that's all. Let's do that with a green. Let's try a green. Now, if you want to go back to your other cubes, you can, or you can just start fresh. The more you practice, the better you will get. Is here, middle tone here, short strokes, and just a tiny bit over here. Just very, very basic. Very basic. May I see your work? Good, good. Much better, yes. Okay, very good. All of this combined is beautiful. This is a beautiful language. It's all beautiful. All right, let's go on. Did I plan? Yes, I would like to do a bit of a composition with you that includes the cube and the cylinder and the circle and just put it together in a sort of a mock still life. So let's give it a try. I know it's a bit premature, but we can always try. I'm going to bring this right back 
to the beginning. And here we have our cylinder composed of a lot of different colors and our cube and our sphere. And notice that as you see the light of one edge of the cube, the darkness of the cylinder in back is emphasized, which brings a more three-dimensional effect. The same thing here. I did not decide to put a shadow here, more for design sake than for realism. Uh, over here, I have done purely uh, cylinders. So let's just take a short look over at the larger one. Again, you see that the, let me use the ruler, the darkness of this cylinder in back was, is emphasized by the lightness of this rim. And so this is how you continue to do uh, the three-dimensional, this backward effect. It is not just realism that I want to convey to you. It is also a sense of design and just your input into the imagery that we present. Let us take a fresh piece of paper, and we're going to start with our cylinder, uh, not, not a cylinder, I'm sorry, the uh, sphere at the bottom right of the paper. I'm going to start with a very light brown. Let your touch be very light. And if you want to, take your hand and try to visualize that your cylinder is going to be here your cube about, I would say, the center, maybe a little bit to the right, and the sphere is going to be about here. So if you take your hand now and run it over the paper and start in the air and bring it down very lightly, and never mind that you think it's going to be perfect because no, even mine is not perfect. And so we've started. The next thing we're going to visualize is exactly where is that cube going to be? Well, we don't want to scrunch it. So I would say we start about, of, if this is about the middle, a little bit above the middle. And we're going to put uh, I think we're just about here. And I say do it light because you might change your mind totally. I'm going to put my second line over here. Already I can see mm, I should have made this higher. So maybe I will bring it up a little bit more. Stagger it. Okay. I'm going to bring it down. Well. I don't think I made it big enough, so I'm going to extend it. And notice that even though I think I've done it, I'm still extending it. I want it to be in back of that circle. So keep doing it. And never mind, no, you didn't make anything permanent. Neither did I. Because with the oil pastel, you can go right over it. You can run right over it. Doesn't make any difference at all. So you're making some adjustments right now. Coming down. I might decide, hmm. Make my sphere just a little bit bigger. You can exaggerate your sphere if you want to. OK, I think I need more space here. So I'm going to extend it a little bit more here. Notice I don't care about the other lines. Go right over them. All right, now I'm going to do this, the cylinder. And I think I want it just about up here. And it has to be in back 
So I would make a point here, run your hand so that you see exactly what your measurements are going to be. Okay. I'm going to bring it straight down. I need to turn it sideways. How far do I want it to go? Maybe about there. It's a pretty long cylinder. Try to make it as straight. Again, if you feel you can't make it straight, then just take your paper and run it along the edge like a ruler. So placement is very important as you begin. Even if you have to turn it around and do it upside down, try to get your lines straight. Still not happy, but I don't care. So are we ready? Ready to have a good time here. May I see your placement? Oh, that's good. I see some excellent placements. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not going to send you on your own. I'm going to guide you. Uh, let's see. Let's take our brown still and try to fill in as many shade lines that we can. So I'm going to do this circular movement on the cylinder. So here I go. And the cylinder also can go down. And I'm going to do my square. I'm going to go straight down. See, that's the way I just erased all those nasty lines by doing that. Middle ground, middle tones, straight across this way. And my sphere. I, what am I thinking? I'm thinking curved lines. And I'm thinking crescent moon. Here I go. Crescent moon, crescent moon. And I'm thinking more curved lines. I'm going to go into my blue. I'm thinking a little bit dark over here. I want you to notice that. I'm thinking curved lines. So I have brown first, now I have blue. Little short wax, little short ones. Maybe getting a little bit more defined. Perfectly reasonable, a little bit more defined. Onto the square. Want to define it just a little bit more. Middle shade. Darker shade. Define the line. Okay, just a little bit here. Onto the sphere, define it a little bit more, especially on the right. Curved line, crescent moon. Real crescent moon here. And cross hatch, but cross hatch at a curve. Green. I would like to make my square a little bit greener. I'm going to take that green and I'm going to make more of a middle shade and cross hatch the blue with little tiny strokes of green. And 
I'm going to bring them as far as I can to the left because my light is coming from my left. And I want to identify the square as being green. So this is where the deep shade is. So I'm going to make it a little bit more force. Just a tiny bit over here. There's another trick. Uh, if you want, you can take your nail and lightly remove some of that oil pastel. Or you can take uh, a lighter color, such as the white. It's not white. Aha, uh -huh. the lighter green. And you can go over it. Okay, that wasn't light enough. So I need to find my white. It's probably pretty dirty by this time. And smear it so that you can diminish that line. Here it is. Okay, so you can take your white. Look at that. See that? Goodbye line. Line just went away. So you could do that also. Even buy yourself a little highlight. I can also buy myself some highlight over here too by putting some white in. And that is the layering quality of the oil pastel. If you don't like it, just blend over it. Just get out of my way. OK. Right over here, too, I didn't like this very much, so I'm just going to blend over it. See, the bottom one I wanted to make more purple. And it looks like, OK. So wanting to make the sphere stand out from the cube, I am placing more of the color purple in it and making it more of a crescent. Well, this is a lot of hard work. It is hard work. Your brain is thinking of a lot of things. You're thinking about three dimension. You're thinking about making everything stand out, complementary colors, distribution of color. If you have a purple on the sphere, then you want to put it somewhere on that square. Distribution of color is very important. So I am going to darken the shadow side of that square with some purple. Why? Because this is the rule. You must balance your picture. And one of the ways to balance it is with your shapes. And another way to balance it is with the color. So no matter what you do, if you put purple up here, you'd best put it down there. And the more you do that, the more effective and attractive your piece will be. How are we doing? We're almost out of time, and I do want to give the awards. So would you please hold up your work so we can take a peek? I am using a paper that was used back in 1947. It's manila drawing paper. Uh, it is not the ordinary white sulfite paper, but it's really cheap, and you know where you can get it. 
uh, and they don't say Manila drawing paper, but it shows up. You can see that it is Manila. Uh, it's a very special kind of paper that holds the uh, it holds the oil pastel very well and gives it a special grain. I remember this in the third grade. Uh huh. 1947. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. That was fun. Hello, Farragut School in Boston. I loved this paper so much that I bought 500 sheets. <laughs> take it home, take it home. So yeah, anyway. So are we gonna show right now? A little bit of show? A little bit of show, come on. You guys, a little bit of show. Okay, nice, nice. Sean, we wanna do just a, a, a quickie. Uh, if you have a special picture that you like uh, and you want your online audience to see, would you please hold it up so that Sean can take a look at it? These are our first efforts on shading, and we will get into it more and more. Each time we do a picture, I applaud your effort. I applaud your effort. And even without me, you can go online. There's so many other tutorials. Uh, there are, are books. I, I, in fact, bought several books on sketching and drawing because I like to see what everybody else, how everyone else teaches. I teach in a certain way, and I want to know what everybody else does. <laughs> Very nosy. All right, I'm going to pull this back. And I am so... So very proud of you. See. Now, if you're too shy to come up here, okay. But don't be shy. Please don't be shy. And these certificates are beautiful. I want to thank Sean Hidalgo and, and uh, Danny uh, for this. Can we get a close-up of these certificates? Yeah, okay. There are the... Absolutely. And, and of course, where you see uh, Ars Gratia Artis, of course, that's Latin for art for the sake of art, and that's why we're here for you. Sensory Stimulating Art Experiences, classes 13 to 18, and is Denise with us today? There she is. Okay. We're going to give you a certificate, and please have you just line up. And let's see the next one. Okay, well, everybody didn't show up today. I knew that was good. Thank you, Denise. Stay here for a minute. I want to see if we can get everybody up here. Uh, is Lisa Alexander here? She is. Thank you. And uh, Maya didn't show up today. Well, we'll save that for her in the office. Okay, Lisa Alexander. Okay. And... Twang didn't show up. Is Betty Fong here? She is. Thank you. Congratulations, Betty. And Pat Lopez Watts. Pat? Great. It's so nice to have you ladies here. Come and stand uh, over here. Yeah. And, uh, okay, Pat. Anna Mar? No. Anna's not here today. Okay. And. Uh, and I forget Jane Wenzel. Oh, you seem surprised, Jane. <laughs> this is your, has to be your fourth class. Has to be. So we can get everybody. Are we getting? Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you again. But everybody. Oh, okay, if we can move. Uh, let me see. I'm going to move over this way. Every. No, yeah, move to your left, left, more left, more left. Okay. Okay. Okay, look at me, everyone. Ready? One, two, three. And one more. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. And let's not forget Sarah. Can we get, we get a shot, behind the scenes shot here? We want to see Sarah. And I want to, well, can I blabber about you, Sarah? Okay, let's take a close look at Sarah, and she is expecting her first child in October, and, and, she, and I want to thank her very much for being such a, 
a great sport in helping us here today. She's an, an intern. Is that Sarah? No, uh, assistant. Assistant. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Sarah. And let's give her some applause. She's been back here and so beautiful today. Sean, did we get a good picture of you or what? I'm going to do a no. selfie. 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 Uh, you want me to hold the camera? I got it. You, oh, Sarah's got it. She's going to do it. I always like to introduce the people who are behind the lines, hard workers, very supportive. Okay, here we go, Sean. Oh, she's going to join the crowd. Oh, well, move up. There he is. Yay, yay. Thank you so much. And we're all thanking ACC for bringing us the opportunity to be here today and uh, help everyone in the community. Come back the end of August. Uh, we're going to have another, I'm going to have a two session, and the end of September, another two session. And we just hope to see you all. Okay. Uh, shout out. UK, shout out. Bye. Bye, Bye Lou.